Hey there guys, welcome to my walkthrough playlist of the OCR MEI 2018 new A-level maths paper 2 which is uh, pure mathematics and statistics. As always, I'm doing every question in its own video. You can get to the playlist down below. I'll link the website down there as well so you can get the paper. Um, also down there will be paper 1 and paper 3. If you're finding these useful, please give us a thumbs up, get subscribed, be awesome. Okay, let's go. Okay, number 13, more fun with the normal distribution. So, each weekday, Kira drives to work with her son, Kaito. Lovely. She always sets off at 8am. She models her journey times, x minutes, by the distribution, x is normally distributed with a mean of 15 and a variance of 4. So, over a long period of time, she notices that her journey takes less than 14 minutes, 7% of the time, and the journey takes more than 18 minutes, 31% uh, of the time. Part 1, for 3 marks, wants us to investigate uh, whether Kira's model is a good fit for this data. So, if the model is a good fit, then the probabilities that a her time is less than 14 minutes and B greater than 18 minutes will be similar to these percentages that she's noticed. So, we're going to work out these probabilities. So, part 1. The probability X is less than 14. Now again we can do this on our calculators. So you need to go into uh, distribution normal CD. For the lower bound we're going to put in a zero. A journey time can't take less than zero minutes. For the upper bound we're going to put in 14. Sigma is the square root of 4 so 2 and mu is 15. So we should get this probability to be 0 0.309 which is 30.9%. Now that is a bad fit with what she's noticed, so 7%. So, so far the model is pretty bad. Let's see what we get for the probability x is greater than 18. So, same thing this time, put in the lower bound as 18, put in a higher bound that's really big, so like a thousand. Same sigma and mu, and we should get 0.0668. So that is 6.68%. Now that is a bad fit with what she's noticed, which this time was 31%. Therefore, the model is not um, a good fit for the data. Cool. Okay then for part 2, Kaito believes Kira's value for the variance is correct, 
that the value for the mean is not. Find correct to two sig figs, uh, the value of the mean that Kira should use in a refined model that does fit the data. Okay, so we just sketch some of the distribution. We know that if we put 14 there, then we know that this area is 0.07. So what we can do is find the Z value that creates uh, an area of 0.07 to the left of it. So we can use the inverse normal. So that we need a little phi. So to the inverse normal of 0.07. So on your calculator, go to distribution and then 3 for inverse normal area put in 0.07 we are finding a z value so mu is 0 sigma is 1 now that will give us uh, minus 1.476 so that is our z value now remember z is equal to x bar minus mu, so here x bar is 14, 14 minus mu over the standard deviation, sigma, so for us that's 2. So if we multiply through by 2, we get minus 2.952 is equal to uh, 14 minus mu and then from that we get mu is 16.952 to two sink things that is 17 boom Okay then for part 3, Kira buys a new car, after driving to work in it each day for several weeks, she randomly selects uh, the journey times for n of these days. Her mean journey time for these n days is 16 minutes. Using the refined model, she conducts a hypothesis test uh, to see if her mean journey time has changed and finds the result is significant at the 5% level. Determine the smallest possible value of n. Okay, so we know then we are now sampling so we know that x has a normal distribution of 17.4 now we're given the distribution for sample means so x bar is normally distributed mu sigma squared over n so x bar is normally distributed with 17 and 4 over n. Now, she's tested at the 5% level of significance. It's a two-tailed test because she wants to know if her journey time has changed, not changed in a specific way. So, in terms of the distribution, we split the 
5% in half. So 5% divided by 2 is 2.5%. So we are left with 2.5% there and 2.5% in there. Now we know that if the uh, value if she had got a Z value in the red region there would be no evidence but if there was if the Z value was over here or over here then the result is significant so what we can do is find these Z values so I'm going to do it using my calculator um, because it's fail safe it always works so the one that we're interested in to be fair we're only interested in this guy over here because we want the least number of days for n so on our calculator we want the inverse normal function the area we put in is 0 0.025 uh, mean is 0, variance of sigma is 1. Now the z value that we will get is minus 1.96. Now by the symmetry, the one over here is positive 1.96. But what am I doing? 1.96. But we don't care about that one. So, remember that z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. Now, to be significant, Uh, Z value, so x bar minus mu over sigma over root n, that needs to be to the left of minus 1.96, so it needs to be less than minus 1.96. So, substituting things in, x bar is 16, mu is 17, so 16 minus 17 over sigma over root, sorry we know sigma, sigma is the square root of the variance, so it's 2 over root n. We know that that is less than uh, minus 1.96. Now 16 minus 17 is minus 1. So we got minus 1 over 2 over root 10. So when you're dividing by a fraction, you flip it over and multiply by it. So on the left, we got minus root n over 2 is less than uh, minus 1.96 multiply through by 2 minus root n is less than uh, 2 times minus 1.96 is uh, minus 3.92 Now let's 
multiply three or divide three by minus one. Now remember that flips the inequality sign. So root 10 is greater than 3.92 square both sides n has to be greater than 3.92 squared which is 2x and that gives us 15.4 Where four smallest value of n is sixteen. Boom.